Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Akira. I'm going to be your host for this uh, special noodle class. We are broadcasting again from Kagawa, Japan. And this is my uh, colleague, Megumi. Uh, she's making uh, authentic udon noodles today. And so we're talking about um, not just like regular udon noodles, but like udon noodles that would uh, boost your immune systems today. So let's get into the class. And uh, so we're talking about um, well, you know, lack of better words, uh, we uh, kind of calling it um, immunity udon. And, um, you know, because of COVID-19 and, um, you know, like the winter is coming, so where we thought like it would be like very good uh, subject to study and discuss um, immunity udon today. Um, but before we get, a, get into the class, uh, like, allow me to spend a few minutes uh, just introduce ourselves first. And so, um, well, basically, I'm a manufacturer of noodle making machines, and we've been in this mess for 45 years. Uh, we make noodle machines that are designed for a restaurant use um, and for small factory use. And these noodle machines are designed to do a um, variety of Japanese noodles and different types of um, Chinese noodles, pasta, you name it, and uh, fresh noodles from scratch. And we've been also running noodle schools for 20, past 20 years. Um, we have a school here in Kagawa. We have another school in Tokyo. We have another one in Singapore. Uh, we teach you know, everything from scratch, um, production of um, noodles, um, soups, uh, toppings, mini development, even um, operation management of noodle restaurants. We also have uh, noodle, uh, I mean, customers using our machines in different countries. We have offices in Japan, eight offices in Japan, including Tokyo, Kagawa, Osaka, um, other cities. We have an office in Seoul, Korea. We have one in Singapore, another in Netherlands, and another being built in New York, United States. We are partners in different countries. So we are basically a group of noodle making experts that help our customers um, to succeed in the businesses with craft, their own craft noodles by develop, well, providing uh, noodle recipes, training, and noodle equipment, and uh, whatever they need to succeed in their noodle businesses. So that's, that's about us. And so we're talking about immunity udon today and um, what we're going to talk about today are so what is udon right because this is the first time actually we are doing udon as a, the main uh, subject in this, this um, online classes so uh, let me just briefly talk about like what, what udon is and um, and the immunity udon and all the keys making great immunity udons um, this is a broken part broken into like Three parts, uh, ingredients, production methods, getting the right noodle texture. And Nigumi is going to demonstrate how immunity udon noodles are made from scratch on a noodle machine. And we're going to show a few examples of immunity udon dishes that I think are going to be like really good ideas for your business as well. And we're going to finish off with a Q&A session. So if you have any questions at all, like please uh, send them in the comments. We'll be more than happy to answer them in the last Q&A session. So let's get started. And because this is the first time we're talking about udon noodles and uh, the main subject, uh, let me just uh, briefly explain like what the differences are um, among like these uh, traditional Japanese noodles. So we, when we come to like Japanese noodles, like there are like udon, soba, and ramen. I mean, like we've been talking about a lot in the previous classes, but like other things, like other types of noodles, like salmon. Um, so ingredients, so we don't use the wheat flour with uh, seven to 9% protein content. And um, there's a lot of salt actually, and for udon noodles and water and vinegar. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about more, more on like of these ingredients for udon noodles later. Um, but Soba um, is, is made of like buckwheat flour and wheat flour, water, and the other uh, it's like uh, binding agents. So buckwheat itself like, doesn't have any gluten. So it's very difficult to make it into noodles. So uh, we use 
and some other binding agent like wheat flour, like or other things, like kelp and stuff like that. Um, but you know, of course, like we can make like 100% buckwheat uh, super noodles, which is of course like gluten free. Uh, ramen, you know, we we talking about ramen a lot, so like I'm gonna skip that here. And the other types of noodles like somen, um, they use uh, wheat flour, uh, salt, um, and water, etc. And noodle sizes vary dramatically from um, different types of uh, noodles, and so. And uh, soup types are very similar, like in uh, for um, udon and soba and somen. They're basically like uh, basically like seafood based stocks plus uh, soy sauce seasonings. Um, but like of course, like there are many variations, and you know because um, they're like some like modern um, types of like stuff that are used. Okay, um, so we're talking about this chart a lot like in the previous classes and um, so udon noodles is uh, kind of placed uh, position here and I think udon noodles are like are like thick uh, big in size like in thickness and width are big so um, thick noodles you know need to be like we should make thick noodles soft because like if you if you have to eat noodles that are thick and hard and that would be like really bad for uh, noodle texture and that that would be just hard to eat right so for udon noodles like you know udon noodles are typically soft so for us to be like udon noodles soft we need to have uh, protein uh, flour with that low protein content and um, we need to add a lot of water so like udon noodles it has like high hydration ratios like around like between like 38 percent to like maybe 50, 55, depending on what kind of udon noodles they're making. And for the size, size of the noodles, that's like 1.6 to like maybe five millimeter width. So it's, it could be like really thick. And we're talking about ingredients and the most important ingredients is wheat flour uh, for udon noodles. So protein content, we, we all talked about it. So seven to nine percent, and then the harder the protein, I mean, the higher the protein content, the harder the noodle texture. For uh, udon noodles being thick, um, it uh, should be soft. So we use flour with low protein content, seven to nine percent. And ash is basically like how much minerals is contained in the flour. Um, that higher ash makes the uh, noodle color darker, and the texture coarse but it has a stronger wheat flavor. Um, the udon noodle has like an image of like being white. So the kind of flour they use has like low ash content, like 0.3%, 0.4%. Viscosity is uh, basically how ma how elastic noodles become, like how sticky, how, how chewy the noodles. So viscosity is very important for udon noodles. So we have to have like wheat flour with a high viscosity value but this viscosity value is not shown on the product label. You have to measure it on a special device. Um, it's called Brabinda machine, uh, which we have at our factory. So if you have like some sample flour, you want to test it for this value, you can you can send it to us and then we can um, you know test it for you, measure it for you. Like uh, that's free of charge. Um, so this chart is specially made for udon noodles and horizontal uh, axis, horizontal line represents the viscosity. So like it's the unit of measurement, like it's Brabender unit, so it's called BU. So basically the higher, the more elastic. So like better the noodle texture. And the vertical line represents like protein corner of flour, like more protein, the harder. But like we are talking about, you know, flour that's specifically, specifically for uh, udon noodles. So that's, the protein content is like between like nine to seven percent on this chart, and we have um, so we have like Kyushu, like Kyushu name of island, like uh, the, one of the four main islands, and Kyushu udon is uh, the softest among the uh, the most famous udon noodles in Japan. Well, like has of course high BU uh, value, and so it's soft and chewy, and uh, the hardest one. 
is Musashino, uh, Fuji, Yoshida. Like these are the like all the names of regions in Japan, and they are very thick and hard. But like it has it has high viscosity value, so it has you know they are they are chewy as well. And Sanuki is the name of the well old name for Kagawa, you know where we headquartered. So uh, Sanuki is well known as um, um, relatively thick and like chewy and uh, hard as well. And Tokyo, Osaka, style of noodles, like kind of kind of in the middle, I mean in between like these two, I mean these extremes. So this is a map of um, Japan that like you kind of like um, pointing like all these like regional udon and like well it also has like some so, like soba noodles as well, like and then like some some somen noodles as well. So like there are many, many of them, like, you know, they're diff all different, like, in little texture, like, sizes, um, and other things. So, uh, many, many regional udon noodles, soba noodles. Um, so, we're talking about ingredients, and then, uh, so, the yeah, water is very important, too. So, like, how much water we add to the flour in mixing process to make dough. And uh, all these, like, different um, dough with the varying hydration ratios. So three types, like on the left, are um, for ramen noodles. And these are these types of uh, doughs are best to be um, processed in our ramen machine. But on the right hand side, it is a dough that's over like 45% in hydration ratio. And this type of dough is like best to be processed on the uh, udon machine. And um, basically, the higher the hydration for the softer neural texture and the shorter the mixing time. Talking about water, uh, the other thing like I want to touch on like water is that like kind of water we want to use for um, maybe cooking noodles and cooking a soup is soft soft water. Soft water means like there's no minerals contained in it. Um, so like minerals being like calcium, like magnesium, um, because uh, when we cook the noodles, for example, like on the right hand side and hot water, um, that allow like minerals already in the water. So all these like ingredients like calcium, salt and other things like, you know, especially like, when it comes to udon noodles, like we use a lot of salt and vinegar. Uh, so these salt and vinegar have to be released to the cooking water. But if we have all these minerals only contained in the water, right? There's less room for these uh, ingredients to be released to, so it takes a lot of time. And well, in exchange, the noodle gets water, so that's how the noodle gets cooked, right? But you know, if we cook the udon noodles, especially udon noodles, is very thick, and it takes a long time to cook, right? cook it, right? Uh, depending on the noodle size. But um, we have a we have a customer like who um, well makes these udon noodles in Hawaii where you know the water is like very hard because it's a volcanic area region. Um, then they, they so they have to like use this hard water to cook their noodles udon noodles, and you know they, they it takes them like 20 23 minutes to cook the noodles or 23 minutes to cook the noodles. I mean, but they it takes only it takes them only like eight minutes to cook the same noodles in Japan where the water is soft, right? So think about like how much more money you have to spend on the gas, labor. Um, so you, like there's nothing good about like using um, hard water for cooking noodles and cooking soup broth. So if you have to work with the hard water, then you know you should use water softener like that one in the picture. And other ingredients we need to use is a salt uh, for udon noodles. And we use a lot of salt in udon noodles. And how much salt we use is that we, we actually make 12 to 15% salty level salt water and add it to the flour in mixing to make dough. So this, is, this is way beyond being salty, but like there's a few reasons we use this much salt in udon noodles. So first, it makes dough more elastic by tightening the gluten in wheat flour. It also reduces the activity of proteolytic enzymes, which break the protein of wheat into shorter fragments. 
which basically makes the dough, tex dough texture like loose and soft. So when the temperature is high, the enzyme acts up more. So we, uh, we need to add more salt to keep the activity down. So it also keeps, uh, helps keep off the growth of bacteria, improves the flavors of noodles, and there are other benefits as you can see on the slide. And we also like we may also add a little bit of vinegar, which helps optimize resting processes. I'm gonna talk about resting processes in a minute. Um, it keeps dough from spoiling, controlled pH level of cooking. Um, and when we cook the noodle udon noodles, most of the salt and vinegar needed are dissolved in cooking water. And then it makes the cooking water light acid. And from our research, from the research we did on cooking noodles using um, cooking water that's neutral, acid alkaline, we found that the yield of cooked noodles is best when uh, cooking noodles in water that's light acid or light alkaline. That's like pH of six and 10. So we add a little bit of vinegar to get these effects in noodle noodles. It's, it's about what percent to weight of flour. And in, in terms of ramen noodles, like, you know, we add kansi, which makes the cooking water a light alkaline. Okay, um, so, and then, you know, because this is the udon that boosts the uh, uh, immune, immune, immunity, like immune systems, so, um, you know, we need to add uh, the ingredients to um, make the udon noodles themselves um, kind of like immune, immunity boosters. So uh, we, are, we are doing it, the ways we are doing it are to like need um, immunity boosting ingredients in udon dough. And um, we test a few types of these ingredients to see how they turn when boiled. Uh, what we need to consider in making these types of noodles are how much of the ingredients needed are lost in cooking water. So same as udon noodles, like release most of the salt and vinegar into cooking water. We, when cooking these types of udon noodles, um, needing needed ingredients to dissolve in cooking water, right? So depending on the ingredients and how they are sort of processed. And it affects the uh, finished colors of the noodles amount of nutrients remaining in the noodles, and taste and flavors, etc. So the table is some of the ingredients we tried and got good results. And um, there are definitely other ingredients you want to try needing into your noodles. So if, if you find some good ingredients needed into noodles, please let us know. But like some of the um, yeah, ingredients we use, like curry, which, which contain like turmeric and other spices, um, you know, there are some like of effects that we can expect from um, using these ingredients. Ginger, garlic, chili, and black sesame, the green tea. These are very good uh, ingredients that we can need into the noodles, fresh noodles. And uh, again, like we are talking about strong immune, immune systems and developing strong immune systems. So certain types of vitamins, minerals work well. So let's just look at some of the vitamins and minerals we should consider adding to our noodle dishes and menu items. So vitamin C um, prevents infections, shorten the time, it stays on body. This vitamin is probably the most popular and the common in many foods we come across every day. So I think it's not really important to discuss further here. But vitamin E is a strong antioxidant that helps us keep off the infection. This vitamin is critical in keeping our immune system function properly. Vitamin A also help us, helps us fight off infection. Vitamin D can be obtained when we are exposed to sunshine. It's one of the most powerful nutrients in supporting our immune system. Like if it's difficult to get it from foods we eat, we should think about getting it from supplements. Uh, folic acids are forms of like B vitamins that our body needs to make DNA and other generic genetic uh, materials. Iron helps our body carry oxygen to cells. It's an important mineral that affects the processes of our immune systems as well. Selenium affects our me metabolism and helps boost our immune system and may even reduce the risk of some heart disease. Zinc required to um, produce 
um, new immune systems also it's, it's also important too. So I think there are many vitamins and minerals that go well with certain types of noodle dishes. For example, some ingredients needed in the noodles or make or used to make soups, sauce, or oils and toppings. But we, we should also think about um, if it if affects the vitamins and minerals are kept intact, if they are cooked in certain ways or heated above certain temperatures, and we should study these nutrients that help keep off infections and educate our customers in order to get through this pandemic by staying safe and healthy and strong. There may be some local ingredients in your regions that are super effective in developing um, strong immune systems. So we should explore and study the ingredients locally available in our regions. Okay. Um, so let's talk about, we started talking about uh, noodle making processes. And, you know, like um, everything like starts with like good foundation. So uh, we need to build good foundation by developing gluten structure in a wheat dough. And so this slide basically um, explains uh, the processes that are important in developing like gluten, good gluten structure inside dough. Um, so basically like weighing of ingredients, I mean the measuring of ingredients the, like by weight, the right ratios, this is the most important process in the building of um, good dough. And, uh, and the mixing, um, mixing is very important too. So our machine like mixes the dough at uh, 60, per, um, 60 rotations per minute. And that allows this agitation glutination um, phenomenon to happen. And uh, this is basically like the purpose of the um, mixing is basically like having like well um, hydration of a dough. So we won't have like equal distribution of liquid among the uh, dough, um, the flour particles. So the, the mixing speed is important and well, addition of uh, the liquid to the flour uh, that is important too. So it's, um, yeah, our mixing mixture allows like an optimal uh, mixing process. Okay, so the so mixing is important. So that's um, one first step in building the good uh, dough. But after mixing, because the, the dough gets or stress, a lot of stress, like from the mixing. So we need to rest it. Like, so we have to um, do this process called like resting process. Um, when making authentic udon noodles, we do a kind of two step resting processes. And the first resting process is uh, um, after mixing. And that's, so we, what we do is that we put the dough in a plastic bag and let it sit for two hours at 20, 28 degrees Celsius. And what it does is it like, it helps like hydrate in mixing process. So it, the mixing process like kind of hydrates the dough uh, well, but like, you know, the resting process like helps further um, hydrate the dough well. And then it also degas the, uh, so it basically removes the like air like trapped in the noodle dough. And uh, so, you know, when the uh, later frost, like with this, uh, these air pockets, like kind of burst, that, that would affect um, the noodle texture adversely. And it promotes a better taste due to the enzyme activities. And it also like relax the internal stress of noodle dough. So that's the effects of the resting process like we look for. And this is the optimal resting line. It corresponds to time and temperature. So basically, the higher the temperature, the shorter uh, resting time. And so it may be easier to understand this by like imagining a banana like turning darker faster in the room during the hot summer day than a cold winter day. The resting process matters more for dough that's high in hydration. So when we make authentic udon noodles, so, you know, again, like we do a like, two step resting process and second resting process like uh, is after um, pressing process and that's 18 degrees Celsius. 
for overnight. And in developing gluten structure inside dough, um, the last process we do is like pressuring. So like we further develop gluten structure by applying pressure or force on the dough. When doing this on a noodle machine, it can be either done by well, combined frost like that's on for um, ramen machine, um, but we use a press machine on a udon machine and apply equal amount of like appropriate pressure on the entire area of the dough is the key. And so after pressuring process, um, we need to rest it again, like for a second um, resting process. And so after we make the dough and like gluten structure, you know, being developed like thoroughly, uh, all we had to do is just thin it and cut it and apportion it. And we cook it, um, the boiling water. And uh, especially like we're talking about udon noodles, so we need to wash uh, off the uh, starch that are like kind of stuck on the surface, a noodle surface, and we, we chill them to um, keep the, uh, the noodle texture uh, tighter. And, but uh, yeah, but these are the basic um, sort of like process. And, um, but we have something uh, different like um, today that uh, our instructor is gonna show later. So he's going to explain um, the method like later. Um, <clears throat> okay, and then so getting the idea of noodle texture. So um, what I'm gonna, what I want to talk about here is that like we you know the size, the shape of the noodles like is very important too. So we roll the noodle, sheet the noodles to um, to the certain thickness, and then we cut it. We cut it to get the certain width. And then when you look at the cross section of noodles, um, the noodle, uh, the ratio of the thickness width should be in a certain ratios. So when we cook the noodles, when you cook the noodles, the noodles become turns into certain shapes. And kind of shape we are looking for is this kind of square shape with like a dents and um, the, these dents kind of carry the uh, the soup, the hold the soup on the dents in the dents. So um, this is the kind of shape that we're looking for, like after we cook them um, in the hot uh, boiling water. So the in terms of like noodle texture, the the shape of the noodles, like the ratio, the thickness and width uh, matters as well. So and um, so this is a, this is like what I have for the lecture part, and um, I like to get started on the production of wheat. I mean, udon noodles, fresh udon noodles. But before we go, um, I just wanna I just wanna talk about this uh, before we go. We start making noodles, and uh, so we, you know, um, it's very hard for us to uh, well. You know, let you guys try the noodles we make during the class, and you know, let you guys try that like noodle dishes that we, um, you know, like show in the class. So, but like you know, if you guys um, live nearby, the following uh, locations like Singapore, New York, Amsterdam, Seoul, Korea, like please let us know if you are interested in kind of trying them out, tasting them. Um, We'll, we'll do our best to like make them available to you guys. So um, please let us know. All right, so let's uh, get started on the uh, making noodle noodles. So we have um, of course like udon flour we talked about like protein content of like eight five this is a eight point five percent. Look at the amount of salt we are adding to the water, right? That's a lot of salt. Okay, and uh, this is vinegar. It's vinegar, right? Vinegar. This one percent to the weight of flour, and it's water. 
So these are the liquid amount, and this is the solid ingredients. So this is the Udo machine that we call a Shinuchi machine. Um, it has this uh, mixer that's 12.5 kilograms mixer. Uh, why? So it can mix up to like 12.5 kilograms of flour at the time. And on top of it, we are adding uh, water, liquid, salt water. And the reason this mixer's maximum batch is 12.5 is that um, in Japan we have um, the flour bag, the size of flour bag in Japan like is 25 kilograms, and exactly half of that is 12.5. So, um, you know, that's just the exact half of the 25 kilogram bag. So that's, that's why I like 12.5 um, kilogram mixer. And because it's a lot of salt, um, we need to dissolve it by adding water to it a little by little, make sure that salt is thoroughly dissolved. And um, as I said, um, so when the temperature is high, the enzyme of the wheat like acts up, right? So we want to keep the activity of enzyme down. So we, in the summer, like when it's hot, the temperature is high, we add uh, a little more salt to keep, the, keep down the activity of the enzyme. And when it's cold, um, we actually reduce the amount of salt we add to the flour. So we, she's, she's adding the water, just around like roughly two thirds of it first, and see the water is like dripping through the holes in the mixer lid to be added to the flour a little by little. And this helps with the, um, like just gradually adding like water to the flour a little by little. Um, that's for um, good, hydration the flour. And the mixing time, total mixing time is just five minutes. And, uh, but you know, you want to save time, you want to save time. So um, she prepared the uh, dough beforehand. So that dough is, uh, well, was sitting in that chamber, resting chamber, for uh, two hours at 28 degrees Celsius. So that's the first resting process. So. What we're gonna do, what she's doing now is that like she's gonna press it, press the dough to develop the gluten structure inside dough and making it firm. So this press machine um, applies pressure kind of equally, evenly um, to the like entire uh, areas of like a dough. And um, so in Japan, like in Kagawa uh, Prefecture, Odella is still, there are still like maybe quite a few uh, udon shops that um, do this in old way, which is to um, step on it, step on it with their feet. And of course, like they uh, lay some like plastic cover over it, but you know, they, they actually step on them step on the dough with their feet and um, and it's actually a lot of work and I like it's like pretty labor intensive job so doing I mean pressuring like pressing the dough 
this way is uh, is a lot easier actually. Yeah. So notice that she like folded the dough inwards before um, you know getting into another round of pressing. So she folded, and so that allows the dough, the like other parts of the outer area of the dough, to be pressed, pressured. And so, in the end, like the entire area of the dough gets um, kind of even, even pressure, equal amount of pressure. So this is the third press. Right, so for the mixer, making dough, um, she's adding the rest of the water and mix it for um, another minute. Pressing is done, and so after pressing this, because that dough is a lot of like internal stresses in, inside dough, so we want to rest it again. Uh, but before we do that, she's dividing into dividing a dough like big chunk dough into like smaller pieces, um, pieces that are like small enough for her to be able to like kind of sheet it tomorrow in because uh, we're gonna have to sheet it out and if it, the dough piece is like too big it'd be like you know hard to um, sheet it to the certain thickness so we want to divide it into small pieces to for us to be able to like to like to make it easier for us to uh, sheet it uh, next day. And look at that, like a layers, the dough, right? Layers of dough. And um, so we, we need to like put them, put, them, put them into plastic bag and put them back in the resting chamber. So this udo machine is, uh, is good at making noodles that are high in hydration ratio. Like so, um, you can make you can make like udo noodles and soba noodles. You can make pasta, certain types of pasta like fettuccine, spaghettini, and um, certain types of Chinese style noodles, and you know certain types of uh, ramen noodles. So it's very um, versatile, and uh, like one thing that's different from um, ramen, our oh, ramen machine is that like it's uh, yeah. So like the types of noodles that you can make are different. Um, so this machine is good at making noodles that are high hydration ratio. Like we're talking about over uh, over 45, 45 percent. And so 
So this is the dough that uh, she uh, prepared uh, yesterday. And so it's very like wet and then um, it has like its own like sort of like, bounciness to it. So to for her, for her to be like kind of sheeted in this machine, the dough is uh, just too thick. So she wants to like first like flatten it flatten it and you can use the press machine to flatten it to make like thin thin enough for her to be like kind of get it through the roller rolling in it. And you maybe like notice that like she is dusting a lot of powder in the dough because it's like it's very wet and sticky. So we want to like dust a lot of flour. And uh, so she started like sheeting it right. And then um, so the the there's like um like a gear shift kind of like uh, lever in the left. And that's that like controls the like um, roller gap between the a set of rollers. And so as she gets into like higher gear, um, that narrows the roller gap. So you kind of like gradually, you know, making it thinner and thinner, like every round, like each round of uh, shooting. So it's important to like kind of more gradually thin it, not to damage the wooden structure that's developed inside dough. And, and you may have like noticed that she, like she's uh, sheeting in different directions. So this allows the dough to have like kind of um, kind of like strong resistance like uh, like when the dough is like pulled like in different directions, it's it's strong. Like you know it's doesn't like vape like uh, easily. So this this uh, also affects the noodle texture as well. So udon dough, like talking about like which type of udon noodles you're talking about, but like um, udon noodles, regional udon noodles, or like, for example, if you're talking about like sanuki udon noodles, it has certain uh, size, certain like range of like noodle sizes, like thickness and width. And um, you maybe like notice that there's like a display, digital display on the right that's showing the thickness of dough being cheated and so you can tell you can actually tell how thick the dough is and now it's like she's folded like two layers so that's like 7.2 millimeters like two layers of dough sheet so the one of them uh, the one sheet should be uh, around like 3.6 millimeter thickness And so now it's ready to cut and you know, make sure that we dust it very well. Otherwise, like they, they, they would stick, the noodles would stick. Let's front and back. And so the thickness is determined by the roller gap, but the width is determined by the cutter cutter and this machine uses cutter knife blade that like um, lifts up and down to cut, cut it, cut the dough 
the neural strands. And we can control the uh, cut width by the speed of conveyor belt that's going to the cutter. So that's done. Um, so look at like all these uh, little noodles like kind of beautifully lined up the tray. And then um, we need to dust them again and, and we take them by the middle, the center and kind of comb them well, and then, yeah, put it in a container like that. So this, this is a kind of a typical, sort of like sanuki udon noodle size. And um, yeah, sorry, uh, these are just like regular type of noodle, I mean udon noodles. But like to, to make them kind of with the kind of immunity like boosting ingredients, all you have to do is just like, well, just make dough with the uh, immunity um, boosting like ingredients like, you know, garlic powder, like chili, um, the ginger powder, um, chili powder, and like curry powder in a mixing process, in the mixing process. So like, it's very, very easy to do it. All right, so that's, uh, so that's how we make um, don't noodles like from scratch. So these are the like so this is like authentic version like udon noodles and uh, we're talking about like you know making udon noodles on ramen machine which we can do and uh, well the process is like very similar to like making uh, ramen noodles but like the the recipes and the are a bit different like from authentic udon noodles. And we have all these uh, recipes, um, you know, database. So if you guys use a ramen machine and interested in making udon noodles, uh, please and let us know. We are we're happy to give you guys some udon recipes. Um, that's for um, yes, ramen noodle machine. Okay, so um, today's kind of special they that like so um well i think like our instructors like has some like really good ideas for uh your your business for takeaways and uh, retail maybe business let's uh, go to our kitchen and uh, this kitchen is used for our noodle school ramen school udon school and um yes so let me just kind of explain a little bit about this kitchen here we have so this kitchen is used for um our udon school ramen school and we have exactly the same kitchen in tokyo office and uh we have like small version of it in singapore and uh, so well we use like a lot of like induction cookers and uh, these are big ones and uh these induction cookers are like enable us to like cook uh, such uh, stocks as like, you know, very thick and uh, dense uh, tonkotsu broth. And uh, we've been cooking like in school, like we've been cooking like different types of like broth, like stocks um, in each pot, like separately, so that like each student can taste how each of the stock tastes, right? And so they can combine them later. 
um, to see uh, how, you know, combination like taste, taste right. So then they can basically like play around like the different components of uh, ramen soup, like toppings and everything, noodles, um, to reach their final uh, recipes or sets of recipes. And so that's, that's what we do at ramen school. And, um, and we're actually doing the ramen school uh, here in Kagawa next week. And uh, so, yeah, and then we're hoping that, you know, uh, pandemic situation will be like ease like pretty soon so that, um, you know, we'll be able to, like welcome you guys to our school like soon. And we're also actually preparing the um, e-learning courses that we're hoping to uh, be able to like, substitute some of the curriculums uh, on the real courses that we do in our school. And so, and I'm all hoping to be able to like, um, launch it uh, in a few months. So uh, for those of you who are interested in it, um, please, uh, you know, let us know. And then like, you know, we'll, we'll guys, we'll uh, keep you guys uh, updated on the e-learning course. And uh, so we have our instructor, Mr. Takeuchi, and we call him Thomas, and he's uh, from Vancouver, Canada, British Columbia, Canada, and he uh, was so happy to have him because he uh, speaks native speak uh, native English. So, and we're happy to have him like teach, uh, show us like a few examples of uh, great uh, takeout menu items uh, using immunity udon noodles. So, thank you so much, Thomas. Hey. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Thomas. I'm one of the instructors at the Yamato Noodle School. Um, so today's topic is udon for immunity. So I will be showing you um, two options, uh, two different ways of making um, udon for immunity, boosting uh, udon meals in two different ways. So the first one is going to be finish at home, take a hot pot udon. So the customer, all they need to do is just heat it up and they'll have a fresh hot hot pot udon at home. Okay, and the second one is gonna be a meal kit style hot pot udon. The ingredients will be raw, so the customer, all they need to do is just uh, bring the ingredients together and cook it at home. And they'll have a fresh hot pot udon at home. Okay, so I'll be making these two different, uh, two ways of making takeout or delivery udon option at home. Okay, so first I'll be making the finish at home takeout hot pot udon. So over there. Okay, so for the finish at home, take a hot pot udon. We'll be using this container. Um, it's just a single use uh, hot pot container and I'm going to put all the ingredients in here and just so the customer, all they need to do is heat it up and they'll have a fresh hot pot udon, okay? So first of all, we'll be using a udon that's uh, pre-boiled, okay? <clears throat> and other ingredients that we'll use are here, shiitake mushroom, fish cake, green onion, and this is boiled chicken, and soft boiled egg, and carrots. So here's a pre-boiled udon. So I'm just gonna take one portion of this udon, and that's just gonna be the first layer of this hot pot udon. And take that shiitake mushroom and two pieces of this prawn tempura. Green onion. And soft boiled egg in the middle. And a couple pieces of uh, this pre-boiled chicken. 
and just add a little bit of color with that carrot. Okay, so the, we'll serve this with the dashi. So just like this. So the customer will take the these ingredients in this hot pot container and the dashi, and the, the customer will pour the dashi into that container and heat it up, and they'll have a fresh hot pot udon. Okay, so this will be the finish at home style. Okay, so the next option is a meal kit style. So we'll be making two different types of meal kit style a hot pot udon. The first one is going to be kimchi hot pot udon. And we'll be using these uh, immunity boosting udon noodles. So we have chili pepper mixed into the dough. So these are a little bit spicy and these, you know, chili pepper, these spices are great for um, immunity boosting. They have uh, properties. So this one's curry powder mixed in udon noodles. So we'll be using these for the hot pot meal kits. Okay, so all we need to do is we just, we're going to pack these uh, raw ingredients into the container. And I'm going to break it up into three parts. Uh, the first one's going to be raw noodles. And next one is going to be ingredients that you need to cook. And lastly, we'll have the ingredients that you just uh, you don't really need to cook. So you just put it as a topping. So these three parts. So the first part is going to be the raw noodle. So I'm just going to take two portion worth of this raw kimchi spicy udon noodles okay. and just put it in the container and the next part is going to be the ingredients that you need to cook so for this hot pot i'm going to put this cut up soy choy okay. and shimeji mushrooms And boiled pork belly, pork belly slices, and a little bit of garlic slices as well. So these are the ingredients that need to be cooked. So I'll bring this together. And lastly, the toppings that you need to, uh, toppings ingredients. So for the kimchi hot pot udon, we're going to have the chives as a topping. And also for as a topping, kimchi, a package of this uh, small kimchi. And also sliced cheese. So this will be the kimchi hot pot udon meal kit. And serve it with the hot pot soup, hot pot spicy kimchi dashi. Okay, the next one is going to be the curry hot pot udon. So same thing. First, I'm going to take um, this two portions worth of curry udon noodles. So this has some curry powder mixed into the udon dough. So I'm going to put this into the container and next uh, once again uh, the ingredients that need to be cooked so I'm going to take I'm going to grab this soy choy cut up soy choy into the bag okay. 
and shimeji mushrooms and boiled pork belly okay that's it so here's ingredients that need to be cooked and lastly the topping ingredients and for the curry hot pot udon we're going to put in the cilantro yes. and some chopped up tomatoes okay. and this is going to be the topping ingredients and for the curry hot pot udon we're gonna we're also gonna add in some sliced cheese as well okay. and for this one too we're gonna serve it with the curry hot pot dashi so the customer will bring these ingredients together in a hot pot at home to make their fresh curry hot pot udon or the kimchi hot pot udon so you can change up the taste and the ingredients all you into your preference okay so that's the preparation part of this hot pot udon so let's actually finish off these uh, meals as the customer like how the customer will do it at home so first of all for the finish at home takeout hot pot udon, I'm going to take this dashi and just pour it in into the container. And heat it up. So it's very simple. All you need to do is put the dashi in and heat it up. So while we wait for that hot pot udon to heat up, let's put in the dashi for these uh, two different types of meal kit style. So first of all, the kimchi hot pot udon. And for the curry hot pot udon, this curry dashi, quick curry flavor dashi. Let's just wait for that uh, soup to boil. So let me just talk about how the udon is usually boiled. Um, when you're preparing udon noodles, you usually boil the udon noodles in a separate boiling water, and then you wash the noodles, and then you bring the soup and the noodles together. But for the immunity boosting udon noodles, since the um, immunity boosting ingredients are net into the dough, when you boil in a separate water, all that immunity boosting uh, properties, it's just gonna be uh, wasted and it's gonna be um, extracted into the boiling water. So what you wanna do uh, when you're serving these um, special type of udon noodles that you have some special ingredients into the no uh, noodles, you want to just cook it into the soup. So you have all the nutrients and the immunity boosting properties will be extracted into the soup rather than the boiling water you're gonna throw away. Okay. And oh. 
So, and also, you have to change up the salt uh, percentage. For regular udon noodles, we use 15% uh, salt percentage water mixed into the flour. But if you're making these um, special type of udon noodles that you're going to cook directly in the soup, you have to make the salt percentage around 7%, maybe half of the regular udon noodles. Okay, so the reason is because you're going to cook it directly into the soup. You don't want to make the soup too salty, so make it lower the amount of uh, salt percentage. So that's uh, those two points that you have to be careful. Um, so first, just prepare the udon noodles uh, so that you're going to cook directly into the soup. So you have to bring down the salt percentage. So those two things. So finish at home, udon hot pot is done. Okay. So just like this. It's steaming hot, so it's going to warm up your body. And all these ingredients, um, you're going to get intake all these uh, nutrients as well. So it's perfect for the winter. So just like this. Okay, so let's get back to the meal kit style um, hot pot udon. The soup is about to be fully um, heated up. I'll just wait for the soup to uh, um, be rapidly boiling. So once the soup is rapidly boiling, I'm going to put in the immunity boosting udon noodles directly into the soup and cook it for two minutes. And also make sure to make the udon noodles thinner than the regular udon noodles because you can't cook these uh, udon noodles for over 10 minutes in the directly into the soup. It's going to evaporate the soup and it's going to be too uh, salty. So it's probably like half the size of regular udon noodles. Okay, I'll put the lid on and cook it for two minutes. So I'll just wait for that curry hot pot soup to be uh, boiling. Soup is boiling, so I'm going to put in the curry, special curry udon noodles directly into the soup. Make sure to mix for the first half. You don't want the noodles to be sticking together. And I'm going to close the lid and continue to cook for two minutes.
So these spicy udon noodles are almost fully cooked. So next I'm going to put in the ingredients that need to be cooked. So pork belly, shimeji mushrooms, and sui choy. And I'm going to cook these for about a minute. So these curry udon noodles should be ready soon. Okay, next I'm going to put in the greens that need to be cooked for the curry udon. So sh same thing, shimeji mushrooms, sui choy, and pork belly. And let's cook this for a minute. So let's get back to the kimchi kimchi udon. So the final touch. So we're going to put the sliced cheese. So two slices of this cheese. And chives in the middle. And lastly, just kimchi right in the center to finish off this hot pot kimchi udon. Okay, let's finish off the curry hot pot udon. So for this too, I'm going to put a, two slices of this uh, cheese right in the center. Lancho right in the middle and tomato as well. So just like this. So this is how to finish off that kimchi, sorry, curry hot pot udon meal kit. So you can probably, so these uh, meal kits is very simple to make, uh, very easy. Uh, you can pre-make all these uh, meal kits and the cost is very low as well. You can probably make these in uh, around uh, three to four US dollars. So you can probably sell these uh, two portions worth of this uh, udon, hot pot udon in like $12 or uh, $15. So it's perfect for the winter time. Let's check out the noodles. How the curry udon looks. Mm. 
Let's also check the kimchi hot pot udon as well. The hot pot is steaming hot, so it's definitely going to warm up your body. Let's also check the finish at home style udon as well. Okay, thanks, Thomas. That was a great presentation, and uh, like I really appreciate your ideas for this uh, hot whole meal kits and uh, um, you know the other days. Like, so it's uh, it's really I mean, it cost you guys like a few dollars. Like, you know, like he bought like all these ingredients at like local retail supermarkets. So if you, I, I think you know, like local markets, like you probably you know can have like better deals. Like if you're talking about like kind of you know getting all these ingredients in bulk, right? And um, so that was just our first attempt, first try, at, um, kind of immunity boosting udon noodles. And I think this is really important because I think pandemic and the number of the infected like seem to be on climb during this winter around the world. So, you know, we have to be able like kind of, well, give our customers like these, these ideas and offerings, you know, for, for us to be able like, you know, kind of help our local customers uh, to stay healthy and uh, strong you know, to get through, to be able to like, get through this uh, winter. And so by offering, you know, these type of meals to these type of products, you know, well, uh, your customers would appreciate it because, you know, that, that's the, that kind of tells your customers that, you know, you are really thinking about them, the help. And, uh, you know, so it's, um, it's a very good thing that, you know, you should start, uh, you know, developing and uh, you know, offering your own versions of kind of immunity boosting uh, meals, and um, from your response, from your businesses. So um, I hope uh, you'll be able to do that in your places. And then, like, if you have any questions about like what we did today in the class, um, please feel free to uh, let us know. Um, I hope you enjoyed the class, and then I uh, hope to see you guys uh, in the next classes. So thank you so much. Bye bye.